Hello again, welcome to another Game Over Jack review. Today, as you can see, we have a double review. Two different statues, same company. Here we have the 1 4 scale Yuna and Titus from Final Fantasy X made by Joy Station Collectibles. Now, as this is a double review, this might take a little bit longer than usual, but bear with me. If Final Fantasy X was my first ever Final Fantasy game, it was my introduction to the franchise, introduced to me by a fantastic friend back in high school, so Final Fantasy X has a real soft spot for me. This was Joy Station's first ever project, and this being the third or fourth. I'm not entirely sure how their Attack on Titan line is kind of working, so this could be anywhere in between, but it is their second release. But let's get on with this review, because there are actually some positives to be found here. For once, I'm actually not going to start with the bases of these statues, because that's actually where the vast majority of the problems lie. So in this instance, I'm going to start with Yuna, starting with her body, and then move over to Titus. So let's start with Yuna herself. Starting with her feet portion, don't make this weird. They've given her a really nice colour for the skin tone and the way she keys in, while it can be a little unnerving at first, is actually pretty decent and holds pretty well considering I've had this one on my shelf for, for a fair few months and it's moved around a lot. It's held together really nicely. The legs and feet themselves have been sculpted really well and this leads us straight into the skirt, dress, thing, with the very obvious split in the back. This part just looks great, nicely sculpted with a lot of great texturing to make it look like the material, and the painting is done really well as well. I also love the way that it flows to show off the summoner dance that the statue is replicating from the game. The large floral pattern running up one side of the skirt is done fairly decently, but does look a little odd due to the class of shades of purple used, but still quite nice. Moving up, we have Yuna's floral wrap, which is also sculpted really nicely, and I love the colours and the way the flowers and plants flow nicely with the rest of the wrap, and the separate key in piece as well. The bow on the back also uses this same design and looks great. The beautiful red separate part for the wrap keyed in surprisingly easily with the magnet and looks great against the wrap and the blue and white cord portions flowing the same way to show off that flowing motion of the skirt honestly just looks phenomenal and really adds some extra life to the character. The wrap shoes on the chest area are really well textured and painted as well, although they clearly enhanced certain areas for a very particular market. And then we have her little silver pendant that's been sculpted into the neck portion of the head sculpt, but we'll come back to that later. Okay, Yuna's weird little sleeves. These are their own little key in piece, and I won't lie, I was super confused as to which one went where, but I used my head and figured it out eventually. Trial and error, baby. The texturing and sculpting on these are great as well, using the same sort of circular motion to flow around her. Absolutely beautiful, and I love these little lace ties on her upper arms. Genuinely surprised something so small didn't snap in shipping. The painting of these parts are also incredible, with the changes from pale pink near the arms to the deeper purple as the sleeves continue outward. A nice little touch there. Now onto the first problem. The magnets for the hands are incredibly loose. These honestly give me the fear. Thankfully, the higher hand is evenly balanced with the staff, but if that staff goes even slightly over the balancing threshold, that is definitely going to pull that hand out of the key. But thankfully, the lower hand, while the magnet is really weak, is so light that I don't think it'll fall. I hope at least. But other than the magnet issues, the hands are painted and sculpted pretty well, and they've managed to sculpt and paint in her rings without any paint bleeding. They've even added some small amounts of metallic pink looking paint to her fingernails, and I suppose her toenails. No idea why, but you do you, Joy Station. Okay, so moving on from the hands, we have to talk about the staff. And you know what? This is a great piece. I love the metallic paint and colours used for this, starting with the tip of the summoner staff with that awesome design, and the use of metallic gold paint was done great, and then moving on to the metallic purples and reds, which is done just beautifully. They could have went with a more simplistic colour or flatter tones, but the metallic paint really makes this stand out, and the little bell on the end as well just really brings it all together. No real complaints here, but I do worry about paint scraping off the staff if the statue needs to be moved or dismantled or rebuilt over time, but I guess we'll have to wait and see on that one. Moving on to Titus, and I'm going to start with the shoe puff in the room. Joy Station, you know that his clothing, at least the leather portions, are black, right? Not this weird colour of blue you've done here. In your promo material, you had it as black, and then in some of your manufacturing videos it was this weird colour, and I assumed it was just needing another coat of paint. But this just looks weird as hell, it clashes really badly with the rest of the statue and even his mini hoodie is a strange almost neon yellow instead of the deeper yellow that was used on his boots. 
You know these colours are meant to match, right? This has definitely been a rush job, and I honestly can't understand why. Okay, shoot off handled. I'll try not to complain about the paint colour for the rest of this review. I'll try. Right, we'll work our way up. The boots. These are actually made really well, and believe it or not, I'm not even mad that the laces on the left foot broke. It's a little disappointing, of course, because... It, but because it was a clean break, it can be easily fixed. These parts of the body are sculpted and painted so well, and the texturing on the yellow portions of the boots is great. So well done on that. You can also see the sculpted stitching in the black parts, which is a nice touch. I like the way they've used uh, sort of metallic paint to show off the clasps for the laces as well. And surprisingly, there isn't any real paint bleeding over from the laces to the boot itself. So again, good job. Moving up, we have his slightly textured socks leading into his legs, which have got a great tan skin tone for the character and sculpted pretty well with defined muscles. Paint is a little flat, but that's to be expected on less expensive statues. Sadly, another complaint is the Xanark and Abe's logo on Titus's right leg. This part looks like they've attempted to sculpt embroidery, but it's came out pretty badly, looking stretched out in parts, and just looks odd overall on his leg. Again, the paint is flat here, even overlooking the colour, and there's little to no texturing on this part, and very few creases on the leg portion to show how it's sitting, unlike the body for Yuna. The stitching is done pretty well again though, as well as the silver painted zipper around the right leg, and onto that super cool weave portion on the back, one of the only parts to have any real texturing on the legs. And onto the left leg, where that zipper portion has clearly been taken away, we have the blue garter. Is that a bloody garter? We'll call it performance pants and leave it at that. And moving up again to his midsection, we have the little black dungarees that Titus wears over his mini yellow hoodie. This part actually has a little more texturing and more emphasized folds in the clothing and the sculpt. Nothing spectacular, but it is textured either way. We also have his little metal chain that attaches to his belt and folds underneath the dungarees themselves, as well as his little pouches attached to his belt on his back. Must be where he stashes all those phoenix downs. The belt itself makes good use of the silver metallic paint for the buckle and the belt loops, but that sadly doesn't continue into the straps for the dungarees with the buckles here looking rather lazily painted and the little crosses just looking really odd in the way they're painted again. Maybe that's just me though, but yet again, the stitching on all these parts is done really well. Then we have his bare chest. <clears throat> that actually wasn't scripted, that's <laughs> so why I did it to see your reaction. <laughs> this has the same skin tone as the legs, with very strangely defined muscles, and then is Xanark and Abe's pendant, which sits as a loose part rather than being sculpted in. All of the parts like this pendant are made of a sort of cheap plastic material, and do look very strange with the rest of the statue, and they're super brittle, so be very careful. The hoodie. I've already moaned about the colour being weird, but the texturing and the sculpt itself for this part is also weird, and the hood on the back seems to be very, very much larger than it should be, occupying the vast majority of his back except for the other little Xanark and Abe's logo hidden there. But again, weird. His right arm starting with the hoodie portion has that nice little white pocket, but I'm pretty sure that was bigger in the game. Could be wrong. And again with the nice skin tone colour paint for the arm, but again it gets weird for the leather colour for the glove. I guess it at least matches the clothes. But at least it has nice sculpting and is very in line with a Titus pose propped against his hip. Now for my absolute favourite part of this sculpt, this arm. The arm with the massive gauntlet, I absolutely love this, even in the game it just looks so damn cool. From the four part blue pauldron to the knuckle bracer and armoured fingers. The texturing on the pauldron is perfect and the use of the silver metallic paint again is really well done. And then into the textured red portions, the gold forearm bracer and that super detailed chainmail looking part on the inner arm is absolutely insane. If you hadn't guessed, I absolutely love this part. Moving into the wrists, we have the pattern portion, then a weird little chain again that is very loose, and then into his knuckle bracer and the cool armoured finger portions that have just been painted so well. Brilliant part. But this sadly leads us to another disappointment. The Brotherhood, a gift from Waka upon reaching Besaid and one of the coolest Final Fantasy weapons ever made. The handle, hilt and handguard are made so well. The yellow, almost katana looking grip looks so cool with the yellow and metallic paints, and the hilt with the ribbons attached to the metal ring, and that handguard looking like something out of a serpentine sort of design, using blues, blacks as well as silvers and yellows to make it really stand out. 
but the disappointment comes in the form of the actual blade itself. The clear portion they've used is far too clear compared to what was advertised, and the foamy part of the blade near the handguard is almost non-existent, and instead is literally just had paint splattered onto it very lazily, and just doesn't do justice to this iconic weapon. It definitely is not what was advertised. This is the promo image for the statue's weapon, and this is what we got. Night and day in my eyes. Moving on from the body portions, let's focus on Yuna's head sculpt. This one, I'll say, is very well done. There's definitely something off about the eyes, but that somber expression is on point for the section of the game that this is based on, and the sculpting for the hair is absolutely perfect. They even managed to keep both eyes two different colours as they are in the game, so that's a good attention to detail there. The hair. I'm very surprised that none of these hairs broke when it was being shipped because the stray hairs seem very fragile, but that is one of the best parts of the statue, a fantastic head sculpt. Even the little key in piece that goes into the side of the head was a little confusing when I first unboxed it, but it's actually a really nice one's pieced into her hair and fits quite nicely with the statue. This head sculpt. Honestly, it was the cause of all the backlash online when the statue was first revealed on Joystation's page but it mostly swept under the rug everything else that actually was meant to be focused on for other problems. But shall we just dive right in? This head sculpt definitely has some major issues, but in all honesty, there are less issues on this one than was on the one in the original reveal. That's still on the box art of this statue. I guess they couldn't reprint the boxes at the stage they were at. Or couldn't be bothered either way. The face itself is really odd, not terrible at certain angles, but definitely way chunkier than it should be, and the expression is very lifeless for such an energetic character. Maybe it's the tightness of the lips, maybe it's the fact this face seems really chunky, and all the features are lifeless in the centre, it just doesn't look right face on. But the side profile is a completely different story, and it looks much better, which is super weird. But looking at the side profile makes one of the strangest issues very visible. The really nasty and overly visible seam between the head and the neck. This was clearly meant to be a separate piece and instead of having it separate, they've simply glued it in and hoped that it would go unnoticed. And by the looks of things, the same goes for that gauntlet arm. Sadly, my favourite part of the statue has got a very similar seam. Let's move on to the hair before I keep rambling. The hair after the redesign is surprisingly good, the tones and colours as well as the sculpting is really well done and flows nicely. The only part that doesn't look right is the parting at the front, which looks really out of place and makes it look more like a wig. But I am glad that this got a much needed overhaul, because it was a real mess on that original design. Motherfucker looked like Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> now moving on, this part almost put me entirely off buying this statue in the first place. And I know and understand that there's a market for this stuff for some odd reason, but why on earth did you need a nude body sculpt for this statue? It literally has a fully sculpted vagina and overly perky Why? It also comes with an almost see-through white dress, and hidden in with a pair of gloves and a cleaning brush, you have a weird fabric bikini. What the f*** wrong with you? Ah, oh, that or you meant to shave the hairs off the, up the brush and look. Oh, stick it on. No, stick it on. If you like some hair, here is brush. Maybe that's what the brush was for. Maybe they put the brush in there, you just cut it up, stick it to <laughs> here, Harry Bush. <laughs> like, what age is she in this case? She's meant to be like 14. Yeah. <laughs> she's meant to be like 14, 16. Like, uh, what the f is wrong with you? This is a fictional character from a game that the majority of us played as children. She's a fictional child. Quit sexualizing, <laughs> it's not necessary. Or at the very least, Give us an opt-out option. Obviously, I can't show this on YouTube, but suffice it to say, it's pretty grotesque. And in all honesty, I was quite worried about Titus as well, because I genuinely thought that he would come with a nude sculpt as well, the massive shoe puff dick. Okay, I'm gonna move on. Let's move on to our base, because this is actually where the vast majority of the problems actually lie in this statue. In all honesty, to begin with, the promotional pictures of this base made it look amazing, with vibrant purples and blues. I was so excited for this piece and the promo images of the base are what sold me on it. This being my first ever unlicensed statue, but sadly when it arrived it was flat, dull, broken and a poorly engineered mess. The attachable parts are colourless clear resin with very clear splits in them with a lot of scraping and other worn down parts 
and that's not even mentioning the fact that there's nothing holding them into their keyholes. Yes, these parts are not magnetized in any way. They key in and simply use gravity to keep them in place. One of the keyholes on mine actually has a very visible cracks and chipping in the recess, but I got off easy. I know of two other collectors with the same piece that have had these issues and had parts fall out or even crack and snap when they dropped. The weirdest part is that I actually found a single magnet embedded in the base, but no magnet on the attached part. I'm just going to assume you guys got lazy and decided to half-ass this base because you already sold it. Now the rest of the base has a nice flow regardless of the lackluster colour. The foam portions are definitely more defined here than they even are in the Brotherhood and add a little life to the base and to the scene that this is supposed to be depicting. It would have been really nice to have had an LED for this part as well. It would have added so much to it, but as it was Joystation's first project, it's understandable that they wouldn't want to overextend on the base. But there might actually be a saving grace. I have seen posted on one of Titus's posts that Joystation is considering reworking the base for Yuna for the collectors that did purchase it initially. And then Joystation went a little bit further and sent out discount codes for the collectors who were purchasing Titus after having bought Yuna. So that was pretty nice of it. I really do hope Joystation decides to rework this base because it does definitely need it and it would be really, really appreciated for all the other collectors to have a reworked base with the more up-to-date manufacturing. But I would like it just to match up with Titus's base at the very least, even though his base is not much better. The Titus base. Where do we start with this one? Personally, I don't understand the logic behind this one. Yuna has such a dynamic and nostalgic base regardless of the flaws, there was actual thought put into it. Titus, however, has a museum pose and a very strange base. Yes, it's made to resemble the Blitzball Coliseum in Xanarkin before the Sin attack, but it looks so odd next to Yuna's super dynamic base. Anyway, starting from the bottom of the base, we have strange sort of rock looking colour to the Colosseum pillars, using greens mixed with a sort of beige colours, with gold portions here and there. The gold portions also form a ring around the lower portion, with what I can only assume is meant to be an intricate design, but it wasn't done entirely correctly, and either it was intentionally weathered, or it just wasn't painted very well, it, I genuinely can't tell with this one. Then we have a rather lazily painted green portion that I assume was supposed to be moss leading into the brickwork, which has also been strangely painted and looks more plastic and glossy than anything else. Moving further up we have more gold and greens mixed in with that rock colouring and a strange little emblem that I honestly have no idea what it's supposed to be and I'm not even going to attempt to guess. Then we have these five cool little pillars that form a ring on the base that holds up the plate that Titus rests on. But before I talk about that, let's discuss this LED. How the f*** is this an LED? Seriously, you actually advertise this as a built-in LED. This is a f one dollar torch. It slots into a recess between the pillars underneath the plate and my hands can only just reach it in its place just to turn it on. But bloody hell this is lazy. I've seen some collectors defend this decision with the argument that at least the light won't die and it can be switched out, but let's be honest here, this is a cop-out and a really bad one at that. This is not a cheap item. This is supposed to be a high-end collector's item, not some cheap toy. If they really wanted a built-in system that could be switched out, they could have done it, but they cheaped out and used a torch. It's a f torch, goddammit. This is just a really bad look, Joystation. Anyway, the plate is actually one of the best parts of the base. This clear resin portion is actually really nicely coloured and I absolutely love the full Xanarch and Abe's logo raised across the entire part with really great painting across it. The only downside to it is that if there is any key in issues with Titus's foot, the other foot tends to scrape black paint onto the logo that the left foot rests on. So that's a bit annoying, but it might not affect that many collectors. And moving back to the LED, sadly, here you can actually see what the torch does for this base. Simply shining through the blue portion of the plate, it doesn't look terrible, but yet again, that's very lazy. But yeah, two statues and two very lackluster bases. On a less sour note, we have the extras. For these two statues, we actually get just one nice little extra each, and these come in the form of these cool little metal plates that has your addition number 
and the edition size as well as the character printed on them and on the back and smaller writing on the front, the Joy Station logo. Not an overwhelming part but definitely looks nice positioned beside the two of them in the display. Now for the size of these two pieces. For Yuna, the height of the statue comes to a total of 69cm and the width is 47.5cm and the depth is 33cm. So it doesn't take up a lot of room but the width is definitely something to be careful of if you plan to display it with Titus because those Pyrefly jets that come out, they go pretty far. Now for Titus's sizing, on his over large base he stands at a total of 61cm tall, 33cm wide and 31cm deep. So not overly large thankfully, so they might actually be able to sit in a, a display pretty nicely. Now at the time of recording this video, both of these pieces are actually still in stock and the price of the Yuna statue comes to a total of $649, while the Titus statue comes in at a total of $435, not including shipping. So Titus definitely has a small discount in comparison to Yuna, and that's probably down to the fact that he doesn't have a nude sculpt. Okay, so I am admittedly very disappointed in both these pieces. I was willing to give Yuna a pass considering it was their first project that they'd ever done, but then Titus arrived and I genuinely thought that with the fan backlash, the community feedback, that they wouldn't rush this one out the door. Clearly I was wrong. What happened to the communication that you started off with Joystation? I remember when you first started out before Yuna was released, there was open communication, you were showing people what you were making as you went forward. Now it's almost radio silence, you don't really take feedback on well, and you do ignore messages when sent. I do honestly hope that everyone at Joystation can redeem themselves from these two pieces. Maybe your Attack on Titan pieces are going really well, but for me at the moment I will have to be very cautious going forward and really have a look at the pieces before they release. So that pretty much wraps up this review. If you have any of your own opinions or if you have any questions please drop a comment below. If you liked the video please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more statue reviews. But until the next one, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.